Dohajista, uh, good afternoon. Uh, yes, and finally, uh, so I'm a cycling writer. I write about cycling, uh, not racing, but the fun stuff. Uh, leisure cycling, cycle touring, A to B cycling, getting around by bike. And that's how I get around, uh, by train and bike. Uh, yeah, it's not always straightforward, as you can see, but I haven't had a car for about 20 years, and people say, why do you cycle everywhere? Uh, is it because it saves the planet? And I say, no, not really. Suppose it does, but that's not why I cycle. And they say, ah, well, is it because it saves money? And I say, no, not really. I suppose it does. Uh, Two, three thousand pounds a year, maybe, over not having a car, 20 years, that's 50,000 quid. Don't know what's happened to it, but <laughs> no, that's not why I cycle. And they say, ah, you cycle because it keeps you fit, doesn't it? Because cyclists have a health of 10 years younger than somebody who doesn't cycle. And I say, no, that's not why I cycle. Because um, in any case, cycling tends to be a zero sum calorie game. You cycle, you have some cake. Cyclists and cake. <laughs> and yet, I've, I can't even pass a normal road sign without thinking of food. <laughs> it's, it's in Kent, by the way, um, and it's not far from Deal. And I cycled around for ages looking for a sign that said sandwich deal, <laughs> but I couldn't find one. So they say, well, well why do you cycle? And I say, because it's fun. It's just simply fun. It's the best fun you can have horizontal. When I lived in London for 10 years, I commuted every day, and it was just great. I always ended up arriving at work feeling fit, alert, happy, in a way that I wouldn't if I was in a car. And for me, cycling gives control. It's so much associated with well-being, mental and physical well-being. I'd rather be on the bike, doing what she's doing, than being sat in a car. And I've been lucky enough to enjoy riding a bike in loads of places around the world and in Britain in the cause of um, researching cycle route articles. And uh, there's a few little pictures from some of the quirkier places I've been that sort of involve water. They're all pretty charted, actually, but it's this sort of thing. Uh, oh, this is me getting around by bike in York. Um, you see, getting around by bike, everything turns into an adventure. And everything can be an experience. So when we go to the supermarket, just for a typical run, it's like here, stocking up with bottled water in the event of a no-deal Brexit, then <laughs> you turn it into something fun. You know, a trip to the supermarket's normally boring and drudgy, but we have fun doing it. And Pat, Action Nan, don't worry. All those plastic bottles get recycled. We cycle them to York's recycling centre, which even has a special entrance for cyclists. So cycling's fun, and here's some of the places I've been to uh, around Britain. Uh, this is quite a famous one, one of the wonders of the canal network. It's Pont Cassaste Aqueduct near Langothen, and it went up in 1805 when evidently they had a different sort of attitude to health and safety. As you can see, there's no railing on the right-hand side. Uh, fortunately, there's a railing on the left-hand side, and uh, you're really not supposed to cycle this particular bit. It's on a canal towpath, which you can cycle from Tlangothan all the way to Chirk, and it's a lovely ride. Um, but there are signs asking you to dismount here. Um, all the locals I saw just kept cycling straight across, probably on their mobiles as they did so. Um, yeah, little quirky things like this. Um, little quirky ferries. Of course, you're familiar with the uh, ferries around here al along uh, over the estuaries, but this is um, a tiny ferry in the Norfolk Broads, a place called Horning, just outside Norwich, over the River Bure. And it's a 10-mile round trip if you're in a car. But on a bike, you can get across on this little micro ferry. And the guy who runs it, sits outside, there's a pub just opposite, and he sits outside the pub with his pint, and if you want the ferry, you hoist up that flag, and he sort of gives you a wave, finishes his pint, comes over, and it's a really charming little experience. Britain is surrounded 
by water, not just around the sides, but often vertically as well. And of course, you recognize this. It's St. Michael's Mount at Marazion, just down the road. Um, Britain actually has 43 tidal islands like this, uh, islands which are part-time. You know, there's a causeway, but it gets submerged uh, at high tide. Only a few of them are cyclable. This one is. Um, possibly the most famous one is this one uh, across to Holy Island. It's the other side of England, um, just south of Berwick-upon-Tweed. We're looking at Holy Island there. It's across this causeway, which is about a mile long. Mainland is just behind us. And uh, a fabulous place to cycle because twice a day, the tide comes in. All the times are posted up there, so you know when it's going to happen. And if you time it right, you can cycle on water. You can do this miracle of cycling on water, and it's great fun. Time it wrong, and you end up in that little shed there. It's a little refuge that's near the mainland at the place where people most likely get caught out. And I did pop up and have a look. And it's not the greatest place to spend four, five, or six hours. Uh, there's nothing in there, just a little bench. There's nothing to read except a little card for a local taxi firm which is of limited use when you've got no mobile phone access and you're a quarter of a mile out to sea. Um, another similar place is Bosham, Bosham Harbour uh, near Chichester on the south coast. Um, the harbour road down here floods twice a day with a tide and uh, again, time it right, you get a great picture for your in Instagram feed. Time it wrong and, you know, <laughs> Not a good day for the poor people who, uh, who own that car. <laughs> and yeah, sometimes the flooding isn't quite so predictable or orderly. This is York, where I live, um, in the floods of 2015. And flooding is getting worse in York. It's getting more regular, and the height of the maximum flood is going up. It's risen 60 centimetres in the last 100 years. It's expected to rise another metre in the next hundred years. And this had big, prob uh, big consequences for York because it actually knocked out some of the electronics and there was no payments able to be made, no cash machines were working, and it was a big dent to the local economy. Um, at least some people could still get around, somebody gamely going on to, I think, the university. Um, and I'm taking no chances. Uh, this is, in fact, the folding bike that you can see there. And on the back is my inflatable canoe. <laughs> so I can inflate the canoe, fold the bike down, and put the bike in the canoe. And that enables A to B journeys, and I'm just future-proofing my life in York. <laughs> and the effects of the flooding of, of climate change, which partly caused the extra flooding in York, part of it's due to other factors, such as land use up in the catchment areas, but Climate change is having an effect. It's having an effect here. Um, again, a natural cycle. This is the east coast of Yorkshire, uh, plain of Holderness, east of Hull, uh, round where I grew up. And I've cycled these roads for 40 years. And I remember when there was roads along the cliff edge, when the road from the, the right went out 50 meters further. And the cliff edge is coming in. It's coming in at two, three, five meters a year in some places with the clear consequences you can see there. And yeah, sometimes it can all get a bit apocalyptic with this talk of going over a cliff edge and the end of the road. But I think we can be a little bit more optimistic about it because we will have to change our lifestyles, no doubt about it. We'll be eating less meat. But you put it that way and it sounds like a punishment. Let's put it the other way. Let's put it the positive way. All this exciting vegetarian stuff that we can discover. I'm not a vegetarian, but I love cooking vegetarian food because of the extra possibilities. And it's like that with cycling. We need to make cycling the most fun way of getting around. Not something you have to endure giving up your car, but just the most fun, most direct, easiest, most social way of getting around our cities. And the answers are all there. It's just a question of political will. This is Copenhagen. 50% uh, of people cycle to work 
in Copenhagen. Half of all the commuting journeys are done by bike. And you can see it's not people in Lycra on expensive bikes, it's just ordinary people on all sorts of bikes, all sorts of ages. Even when it's raining, they're still cycling. This is a rainy, cold November day. And look, these people are happy. They're happy, even though it's raining and they're cycling to work. It is possible. And so these changes that we're going to have to make to our lifestyle, I don't think we need to fear them, because if we play it right, we can make them enjoyable. We can make cycling the most fun way to get around. And here's just a final little example of something that happened by accident in York. It's the Millennium Bridge on the River Ouse, just south of the city centre. Uh, a transport link that went up 20 years ago, connects the university on one side with a residential area on the other. A great, great addition to helping people get across the river, um, pedestrians and cycle only, of course. But you'll see on the right there's a bench. Now that bench wasn't intended to be somewhere to sit. The architects, Whitby Bird, just designed it as a boxing in of some structural stuff and cables. But it's turned the bridge into a social space. It's a target, it's not just a thoroughfare. People go there, sit, have an ice cream, have a picnic, meet friends, just sit and watch the world go by. And it's changed this transport artery into something that's a social space. And the lesson is, if you design your spaces to be good for pedestrians, to be good for cyclists, you design it to be a much more enjoyable, much friendlier urban space, a place that's easier to live and much more enjoyable to live in. So that's the final thing, just to say, as we all face the uncharted waters of the future, I don't think we need to be too fearful about it, because if we can get it right, we can look forward to the future with anticipation and, like my cycling, with enjoyment. Thanks very much.